improved services and facilities at the NAIA got the green light with a whopping 170 billion peso price tag. Loved ones of victims in the drug war see a long fight ahead, even as the International Criminal Court resumes its investigation into the campaign's abuses. And President Bongbong Marcos wants to get more information on what was talked about when his predecessor, Rodrigo Duterte, met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Fast, focused, and fearless. Here's a roundup of stories we're watching now. I'm Sean Yao. The National Economic and Development Authority has approved the 170 billion peso solicited bid to rehabilitate the Nino Aquino International Airport or NAIA. NEDA Chief Arsenio Balisacan said the project is expected to address long standing issues at the country's main gateway. These include the inadequate capacity of terminals restricted aircraft movement, and service quality of the airport. The project, which is under the Transportation Department and the Manila International Airport Authority, is among the three new infrastructure projects approved by the NEDA board. We expect to uh, have the winning bidder uh, within the year. Uh, and so uh, as early as uh, next year, we could have uh, the, uh, the project uh, started. And yes, it will cover all the terminals, uh, including um, uh, all the facilities in uh, 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 both the, 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 uh, the, the aprons, the uh, runways, and all, and all related facilities. In other news, officials of former President Rodrigo Duterte are reacting to the International Criminal Court's ruling to restart the investigation into the Philippine drug war. Lawyer to Duterte and former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said his client is not bothered at all by the decision. Roque also reiterates that the ex-chief executive will not face any foreign court. Because the president has maintained that he will never face a foreign court for crimes that allegedly took place in the Philippines. No, The Philippines is a sovereign and independent state. And because of it, the local courts that should exercise jurisdiction over these crimes. Would you know whether or not former President Duterte actually knows of this uh, recent decision of the ICC? Uh, he is, of course, one of the targets of this investigation. I'm sure he couldn't be bothered. For his part, Duterte's former legal chief or chief legal counsel, Salvador Panelo, maintained that the ICC has no jurisdiction over the Philippines. He also called on the government to stop giving the ICC attention and to just ignore the Rome Statute. It's a foregone conclusion. Matagal na nilang gustong pumasok kahit na wala silang jurisdiction. Pangalawa, hindi naman, hindi naman totoo yung sinasabi nila itutuloy ang investigation. They never investigated in the first place. Wala mm -hmm. naman talagang pagbabago eh. Mm -hmm. Kaya talaga namang walang jurisdiction eh. Kaya nga pati si Presidente Marcos Jr. yun ang sinasabi. Kaya oh. ang problema, yung soldier natin, eh, meron ng instruction ng Presidente eh. Hindi niya naman sinunod. Meanwhile, the top cop under the Duterte term, and now Senator Bato de la Rosa, is not worried about being arrested. As a co-target of the ICC probe, de la Rosa says, he will only honor any arrest if Filipino authorities are the ones who order it. He also accused the ICC of politicking over the supposed mention of Vice President Sara Duterte's name in the probe documents. Malaking gulo kung mag-insist sila pumasok dito at umaayaw yung ating gobyerno. Ah, sobrang panghihimasok na yan. Sige lang kung meron silang warrant of arrest, let them serve the warrant, let them implement the warrant and uh, Kung may implement yan, then uh, huhulihin ako ng uh, gobyerno ng Pilipinas, uh, wala problema. Nagtataka ako ngayon ng naging vice president na si Inday Sara at pupwedeng magiging presidente ng Pilipinas, uh, uh, magiging next president ng Pilipinas, eh bakit dinadawit na nila ngayon? Eh parang halata talaga na pamulitika. Eh. Gusto lang ubusin yung angka ng Duterte. Kahit na yung uh, anak na walang kinalaman, Idadamay nila sa, sa war on drugs. 
And here are some more reactions to the ICC's decision to go ahead with its inquiry into the Philippine drug war. In a statement, Senator Risa Ontiveros noted that the rejection is a step towards serving justice to the victims of the drug war. She also hopes that the Marcos administration will cooperate with the ICC investigation. And for her part, renowned forensic pathologist Dr. Raquel Fortune hopes that the decision will embolden grieving families of supposed victims of extrajudicial killings and abuses to fight back. Meantime, victims' families could not help but get emotional over the decision. Hindi ko kasi talaga may paliwanag yung nararamdaman ko na nalulungkot ako na natutuwa ako kasi bakit kailangan humantong sa ganito na sa ibang bansa pa kami hihingi ng, ng kakampi para lamang mapakinggan kami. Naiiyak po ko at nagagalit kasi sa mga ginawa ng presidente natin na mga pagpatay. Dapat minamahal niya yung mga nasasakupan niyang mga sa Pilipinas, sa kanyang mga anak. Pero anong ginawa niya? Pinapapatay niya to. Kawawa naman po kami. Lalo na yung anak ko, nag-iisang collateral damage. Hindi po ako natakot na manawagan na magpatuloy hanggang ngayon. Kaya eto, nanalaman ko po at napanood ko ang ano ng ICC. Naiiyak po ko kasi mabibigyan na po ng ustisya. We have more stories for you after this quick break. Keep it here on One News. You're still watching One News Now. I'm Sean Yao. President Bongbong Marcos is hoping that former President Rodrigo Duterte will share more details on what happened in his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The chief executive said that his predecessor does not need to ask for his permission to meet with the Chinese president and that he was aware of Duterte's visit to Xi. Marcos Jr. also hopes that Duterte raised the matter of Chinese vessels shadowing Philippine ships in the West Philippine Sea in that meeting. Para naman magkaroon tayo ng progress kasi yun naman talagang hapon natin, eh, patuloy ang pag-uusap. Kaya I welcome any, any new lines of communication. If that is uh, President uh, PRRD, then good. I'm sure he will, be able to, he will be able to tell us what happened during the conversation and see what, uh, uh, well, how that affects us. Checking in on the weather now. The low-pressure area near Mindanao is expected to intensify into a tropical cyclone within the day or tomorrow. Once this LPA turns into a tropical cyclone, it will be named Egai. There are no direct effects yet from the weather disturbance, but its trough and the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, will be bringing scattered rains to some areas. These are Eastern Visayas, the Caraga region, Bohol, Camigin, Misamis Oriental, Davao de Oro, and Davao Oriental. Metro Manila and the rest of the country can generally or can expect generally fair weather with some chances of rain this afternoon due to the combined effects of the ITCZ and localized thunderstorms. And amid the inclement weather, the water level at the Angat Dam is slowly rising. This morning, reserves are at 180.94 meters, still above the minimum operating level of the dam that supplies water to most of Metro Manila. And in sports, the semi-final cast of the PVL Invitational Conference is now complete after yesterday's thrilling matchups. Here's the kicker. Two guest teams from Japan and Vietnam 
will be spicing up the competition. Marty Bautista tells us more. The F2 logistics cargo movers didn't waste time and got down to work against the photon tornadoes in the PVL Invitational Conference. F2 scored a straight set win in dominant fashion, 25-18, 25-18, and 25-14. Ivy Laxina paced the team with a game-high 16 points, while Majoy Baron added 12 markers of her own for F2. The cargo movers ended the Pool A preliminaries with a 4-1 win-loss record to bag a semi-spot. Of course, we know this is our ticket to semis, kaya kailangan straight set talaga. Coming to this game, yung mindset talaga namin is to be aggressive. And yun nga, yung sense of urgency kailangan nandun. And lumabas naman. The Signal HD Spikers likewise only needed three sets to beat the Chocomucho Flying Titans. Signal is also in the semis with a similar 4-1 slate to F2. Jovelin Gonzaga led the way with 13 points on the back of 10 attacks in three blocks. Final score 25-15, 25-21, and 25-21. Sinasabi sa amin pa ulit-ulit, andyan na yung skills. The more ka mag-overthink, the more ka madidrain. So ang ginawa namin, naglaro kami as a team. Um, Nag-stick kami sa task namin, yun yung pinaperform namin. Thankful and credit sa coaching staff namin na sobrang nagtsaga sa amin all throughout hanggang sa makarating kaming semis. Meanwhile, the showdown between the PLDT high-speed hitters and Cherry Tigo crossovers went the distance. Both teams alternately won the first four sets before PLDT denied Cherry Tigo rookies Aimee Hernandez and Ea Laure in the final set to secure the win. PLDT gained the fourth and final semi-spot in the Invitational Conference as a result. Final score 25-21, 16-25, 25-23, 25-27, and 15-12. The round robin semifinals begins right away tomorrow, Thursday, between PLDT and Signal at 4 p.m. This will be followed by F2 and the Creamline Cool Smashers at 6.30 in the evening. Joining the mix in the semis are foreign guest teams from Japan and Vietnam to heighten the level of competition. For News 5, Mari Bautista, We Are One News. One News Now will be back tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. I am Sean Yao. We are One News. All sides, all the time.